This is how you change your scenes. And this is how I change my scenes. Bam. Look at that amazing transition. In this video, I'll be showing you how to improve your stage manager, what a stage manager even is, how to improve your scene changing, and how to make it more efficient. And most importantly, how to do it manually. Okay, so right away, we see this is just a very simple way of changing scenes. So all we can do is create an on ready variable with main, and we just set that path as main and then we'll just change to main right so we use change scene to file main and then in the same thing we do the same thing pretty much in the other main so main two we go back to the first main right and this works but it doesn't it might one you might have noticed the bigger your project gets the more laggy this becomes right that's one thing and another problem is that there's no loading screen so the issue is when i have something lagging in front of me the player doesn't like that. The user doesn't like that, right? So you're the coder, you're the developer, but the person playing looks at this and it's just a complete laggy screen and it's not instant for them, right? So we have to fix that and basically put a loading screen in front of them so that way they can look at that instead of looking at a frozen screen, right? So as, as frustrating as loading screens are, uh, loading screen is definitely better than looking at a frozen screen. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new scene and this is going to be, you can realistically do whatever you want, um, but I'm going to be doing, uh, what do you call it? Canvas. I'm going to be using a canvas layer. And the reason why I use a canvas layer, so let's save this, and we're going to call it stage manager. I'll just do manager like that. And let's preload this. So I'll explain why I do this in a second. So auto load, let's go here. Ignore the things I have preloaded already. And let's add this. So now we've preloaded our scene. If you don't know what, uh, sorry, not, sorry, not preload, auto load, auto load. What auto load does is when I play, now if I go to remote, I can see all the auto loaded scenes. And the reason why we do this as a canvas layer is because even though this is behind the main, it's gonna show in front because it's a canvas. I'm painting on, on top of the canvas. Anything I paint on here will be on top of anything else. So let's say I change scenes and I want to, keep the loading scene in front of the player. I can do that because the stage manager is still there, right? And the, the stage manager will never be deleted. We'll just hide it in the end, right? So what we'll do is obviously rename this to stage manager. Next up, we're gonna add a script. Okay, in our script, there's a few things we're gonna do. So the first thing, the best part about this is we can now have one script or one area where we have all our scenes. So we no longer have to kind of just add it here, add it there. Like we don't have to add it everywhere we want to change it or call it every time because now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and let's delete this and we're going to paste it here. And instead of variable, I usually use const instead of on ready bear or whatever. Um, I just like doing it that way. If you don't want to do it that way, that's totally fine. And now we're just gonna load our two scenes. So now we have main and main two, All right? So now let's go here and delete this. And now what we can do is instead of calling main two, we can say stage manager dot main. And what that'll do is call this, right? And then here we can do the same thing. So let's copy this. So in main two, We'll do the same thing, but call main two. So now if we play and try this, it has it's the same thing. Okay, hold on. What's going on? Stage manager dot main. Okay, so I just uh, realized we can't actually do that because this is calling a scene and not a uh, script. So we can't actually do that, but we're gonna be doing. Uh, we're gonna change this up to actually work properly in a second. So let's actually just remove those. We'll be using those in a second, and let's get started on our actual function for changing scenes. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually uh, name the or create the function. So change scene or say I do change stage usually and then in our change stage we're gonna call through a string or a word right or variable and i usually call it stage path I mean, a good practice one of my professors actually showed me was doing this so the first word should be uncapitalized and then after that capitalize the other ones so uh, i'm gonna do the same thing here actually okay and next up we're gonna go to the next function or we're gonna actually write the function and here what we can do is we can just take this delete that and post it here. And then the stage path will do this. And now what we can do is do call stage manager dot change stage to stage manager dot main to right. Yeah, no, just main. So that's how we do that. 
Let me just double check that's how we do it. Okay. So here, let's copy paste this. And then here, we're going to copy it here. And then let's try one more time. And now we can change scenes properly to both from one scene to the other. So we've now essentially outsourced the everything that we did to a separate scene. And the reason we do this is because now we can actually do stuff with this. So now let's actually add like a canvas modulate. That's what I'm going to add. Let me, yeah, let's add a, no, not canvas modulate. Sorry, canvas, you know, color rec. That's what it's called. That's what I use. You can also use a panel, but this, uh, it's a little better since it's actually for colors. Um, you can, I'm going to do black. Usually a black scene uh, transition is not bad. You can do whatever you want, but I'm going to do black. Let's add an animation player. And then let's add a label for the loading. Uh, that's not what I meant. Uh, label, there we go. And then let's make that here on top. And then here for the label, let's just go into the specter, please. Can we go loading dot dot dot. And let's just drag that kind of in the middle. And then what we can do is put it in the center. And now what we're going to want to do is create two, two animations, trans in and whoop, trans out. This is basically just transition in and transition out. So we're going to have a transition in and transition out. Okay. So for the transition in, what we're going to be doing is essentially making this from non-invisible. So let's go to um, visibility. We're gonna on, we're gonna modulate it into being invisible. What I'm gonna do is actually I'm gonna make this a child of this. I'm gonna modulate this. There we go. So it's invisible. And then after one second, what I'm gonna do is reset that and then unmodulate it. So now what we have is this. So it'll look like that. And then let's make this like two seconds. And then let's just leave it like that. So we'll leave the loading screen for two seconds. And then let me just double check one thing. Do. Okay. Okay, awesome. Now let's go to transition in. I think I actually reversed it. Yeah, I did. Okay, so we're going to actually do the same thing, but uh, the other way. So let's go to one. Key this. Here we go. Make that invisible. Okay, let's go back to our trans out. And what I can do actually is just flip these like this. I don't have to reset anything. Okay, there we go. So now we have from here to invisible and then trans out and then trans in is going to be the same thing. Transition in and then that's it. Let's actually make this um, 1.5 each. So the total loading time will be 1.5, uh, three seconds, right? So we're going to load in and load out. All right, next up, we're going to go to our stage manager. And here, there's a few things that you should keep in mind. So color rectangle, because this is a canvas, is going to be on top of our screen. And now, hopefully I'm not wrong. Okay, well, yeah, now I can't click anything. Even this, if this were modulated, right? So even if I were to do this and yeah, yeah this will be the default uh, modulate. Let's play again. Even if I were to do, oh my God. What is happening? Reset. Here, let's make this invisible. Do, do, do. Okay, that's our reset. Okay, even though I can see everything, I can't click anything. Now, this is a common bug and a problem error that happens because what's happening is the color rectangles on top of our screen. Now, you want to basically make this invisible. So what we can do, there's a few things we're going to have to do. Let's create a ready function that's going to get our Oops, color, color rect and just hide it. Now what this will do is instead of using the reset, in fact, let's just delete this because I, I really dislike the reset thing. Now what it'll do is just hide it. So now I can actually click things, right? Okay, so now let's actually add our animation. So from here, we'll just do get anim. First of all, let me rename this to anim so I don't error when I have my things. So we're going to say get animation, fade in, and then we're going to say get animation and fade out. Okay, so let's play and see what happens. Absolutely nothing. Why? Because our color rectangle is hidden, right? So what we have to do is we have to actually show it first. So let's get our color rectangle and show it. 
right? Because we don't do anything in the animation to show or, or hide it. So we're going to do that in code. You can do it in the animation player, but I'm going to do it through code. After this, nothing, still nothing might have happen. So we have loading and nothing's going to happen. Why? Because it's going to be playing fade out forever, I believe. And what we have to do is we have to actually await. We have to use yield, essentially. In Godot 4, we're going to be using await. So what we're going to be doing here is await get node anim dot animation finish. We're going to essentially wait for the animation to finish, and then we're going to do all this stuff, right? Okay, now we can do this again for animation fade out. And now what we should have is... A transition that's basically not working. Why is that? Let's take a look. Let's go to animation. Transition in. Ooh, probably because I don't have a transition called fade in. That's probably why. Trans in. Trans out. There we go. Let's try that one more time. All right. There we go. Loading. And it's going to error because I don't have, I didn't capitalize it. One more time loading and loading out and as you can see the reason why we have this is so that it it basically waits before we actually do anything now we have to do one more thing as you might be noticing we have to hide the color rectangle again because now i can't click anything okay should be most of the things let me just double check okay yeah that's mostly it so let's play change we have a loading screen we load back and that's it. Okay, awesome. That's pretty much it for this um, idea. One more thing that I like to do is I will usually pause before and after. So I'll unpause after. So let me, it kind of depends where you want to do it. You can do it after the animation is finished or before. I like to do it kind of right after or right before. But we can also pause here. Now, however, this is going to be an issue. So let's let's play this and see what happens. It's going to be stuck in the loading screen. Why? Because we paused it. So what we have to do is go to the stage manager and go to process. Instead of inherent, we're going to do always. So we always want this to be working. So let's play one more time. Change. And now it'll be working. So if this is really good if you have a platformer or RPG game and you have a player moving, right? So you could move as you're changing scenes. And if you don't want that to happen, you can pause this the tree, but keep the transition moving. So that's a good way to do that. Okay, awesome. Um, that's pretty much it for this video. Um, in the next video, hopefully there's another video, I'm going to be showing you how to manually change the scene if you want to do that, um, because this is a very nice tool to do. And lastly, I'm going to show kind of on the stage remote what it looks like. So here we have the stage manager, and it's going to change behind the scenes kind of to just main, uh, main two. I need to rename it to main two, but you get the idea. So that's a nice way to do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the subscribe button. Um, I'm going to start stop blabbing and um, comment down below and like the video.